Meteor by Patricia Polacco. This is a story. It's autobiographical, kind of. I mean, it's a memory of Patricia Polacco's from when she was a child about the summers when she spent with her grandparents and how something big happened on the farm and how rumors and gossip gets going and changes the story. Meteor by Patricia Polacco. Many years ago, when my brother and I were small, mom let us spend the summer with our grandma and grandpa Ga on their farm in Michigan. One night, far above that little farm, a star sputtered and flashed and started to fall. As it, uh, as it fell through the sky, the geese honked their alarm, the chickens cackled, and the goats bleated and jumped wildly about. The bright light with the long fiery tail streaked through the sky unnoticed by the, my family. Grandpa was reading the Herald, Grandma was correcting school papers, my cousin Steve was tinkering with his wireless, my brother Richard was practicing the piano, and I was reading a storybook. A wireless, I believe, was a kind of radio that they, when they first had radios, people would kind of design their own ones at home. Suddenly, without warning, the house started shaking. Plaster came loose from the ceiling, dishes fell from shelves, rugs curled on the floor as if they had a life of their own. The flaming object made a terrible sound as it went shrinking over the roof of the house. Then it crashed into the ground with a horribly loud boom. There it is. What kind of figurative language is that? Do you remember? Boom. It's a sound word. It's onomatopoeia. It landed with such force that glass broke, chairs overturned, windows rattled, and walls shuddered. The front door was laid open by a blast and through it an eerie light could be seen glowing from a big hole in the front yard. We were stunned, but soon curiosity overcame caution and we timidly made our way outdoors to get a good look-see. Why, it's a fallen star, Grandpa gasped. Of all places on earth, a meteor could have fallen. It landed smack dab in the middle of our yard. Grandpa and Cousin Steve pounded stakes all around the meteor and roped it off. Look at their faces. Even the animals are there peeking. The next morning, here we go. Grandma called Uncle Carl. That's what I said, Carl. A real falling star right here in my front yard. Carl called Bertie Potter. Did you hear, Bertie? A falling star out by the gaw place in Mudsock Meadow came in so low it almost hit the house. Bertie called Mayor Hatch. That's right, Howard. It took off the roof and almost hit the clothesline. That poor family. Mayor Hatch called Burly, Pearly Beach. Unbelievable. Took the roof, the power lines, and hit a cow. Pearly called Vera. I tell you, it flattened the gaw place. It took the power lines, water mains, killed the stock, and it's still smoking. Vera called Mrs. Titus at the hardware store. The whole place is gone. The barn, the animals, and there's poison smoke coming from it. Mr. Titus called Officer Washburn, who called the fire chief. Sounds like they'll be needing us, Chief Quile exclaimed, he started up engine 23, turned on the siren, and headed out. But news traveled through town faster than an engine could leave the firehouse. And there's the big circle. Have you ever heard of that re referred to as the grapevine? Somebody would say, oh, I heard it through the grapevine. The grapevine is the group of people who one person tells the next one, then the next one, then the next one. And sometimes the story changes. And Union City was abuzz with what happened in Mudsock Meadow. Merchants closed their shops, school was left out before noon, and just about everyone in town headed for the God place to see that mysterious meteor. I wonder how big it is. Just think, it came from way out in space. Isn't this the most exciting thing? I can't wait to see it. Carly, George, and the kids. This is more exciting than when Bertie Felspot got her elbow caught in the revolving door at the library over on Coldwater Way. As the crowd jostled, trotted, rolled, and bumped through the countryside, bystanders and onlookers joined in and came along to see the meteor, Dr. Trotter's medicine wagon, the cold water Chautauqua Circus, and the Union City Ladies Lyceum fell in with the parade of citizens. 
They were soon joined by the Union City High School band, which hooted, tooted, boomed, and jingled. Oh, listen to all that onomatopoeia. I'm going to say it again. Hooted, tooted, boomed, and jingled their instruments as they ran down the hillside. As more and more people arrived, Grandma and Grandpa's farm soon became a carnival of meteoric events. Meteor basket lunches were auctioned, meteor popcorn was popped, meteor lemonade was made, meteor liniment was sold, and the Chautauqua Circus was going to give a meteoric performance. Now remember, none of them have even seen the meteor yet. But folks, most folks simply stood and stared at the wondrous meteor to think, Grandma repeated to everyone, of all the places on earth it could have landed. It came smack dab in the middle of our yard. She beamed with pride and was truly happy to see friends that she usually only saw once or twice a year. They're all excited to see that meteor at last. Helio the Great, master of stratospheric maneuvers and atmospheric acrobatics, while on his way to the Ionia State Fair, landed his hot air balloon and offered special meteor rides. These included an ascent of approximately 40 feet and a slow descent in order to take in the full panorama of the farm and the meteor. The Union City High School Band gave a meteoric concert. In the midst of all the festivities, a group of scientists arrived from Battle Creek College, the University of Michigan, and Michigan State University science departments. They set up all of their buzzing testing equipment and put on strange looking protective suits. They turned on all of the machinery. Click, click, pop, whiz, pre, pre, it went. Lots of onomatopoeia there. The scientists looked thoughtful scratched their heads, and wrote down lots and lots of data. They measured, pondered, quizzed, and figured. The crowd leaned closer as their chief finally spoke. Yes, sir, this is a genuine meteorite. The crowd clapped and cheered. Charlie Lake struck up the band and the circus began a meteoric performance again. Ling Po and Ping Hao, the jugglers, threw little golden balls and shiny silver rings around and around in the air, while Tilly and Lily, the dancing elephants, balanced on one foot as the leaping luckies, that's alliteration, leaping luckies, it starts with the same letter. The trained dogs jumped about and did somersaults. The Union City Lyceum Dance Troupe performed a special number of interpretive movement depicting both the falling of the meteor and the last days of Pompeii. Do you recognize that name? I think some of you have read on in the Earth Changes book that you took home from school and there's a story about Pompeii and Mount Vesuvius the volcano that erupted in Italy so long ago. And then there's the story written about somebody who survived it. So if you haven't finished reading Earth Changes, you could read it and learn more about Pompeii, the city that was buried by a volcano. I touched the meteor, Tommy Enderberry said to Marietta Crimmel. And as soon as I did, I could play my trumpet better than ever. Marietta told Cecil Park, Potter, that after she touched the meteor, she thought up the best recipe for pie she did ever have. I'm going to enter the pie in the pie contest next fair, she exclaimed. Cecil tried, uh, told Dr. Trotter that since she touched the meteor, she had more energy than she'd had in years. I tell you, I could feel something coming right up into my finger from that there fallen star. It's magic, I tell you. Dr. Trotter claimed that ever since he touched the meteor, his liniment which is like an ointment, like a healing ointment is a liniment, had acquired super mysterious healing powers. Hollis D. Lonsberry, in turn, was convinced that his best hog was going to become a prize winner. I'm going to enter him in the Ionia State Fair. He chirped to Gladys Pardee. Gladys was positive that since she touched the meteor, her eyesight improved instantly. I'm telling you, Leonard, she said to Mr. Pinehurst, I can see all the way across the barnyard extraordinary he sighed 
as he stared at his forefinger. I touched it too, and I feel really, really special. Everybody is trying to get a part of the meteor specialness, aren't they? As folks left the Gaw Farm that day, they all felt special. They were changed somehow, inspired by the act of touching something that had fall, flown across the galaxy. It seemed like magic, all right. The Union City High School Band went on to win the state championship that year, thanks to a trumpet solo played by Tommy Enderby. And Marietta's current blueberry pie took the first place at the county fair. Hollis D. Lonsberry's best hog, Herman, won the best of show in the Iona State Fair. Maybe these things would have happened anyway, but who can say for sure? All I know is that for three generations, the meteor was a source of wonder to the little town of Union City, Michigan, and especially to my family. It remained on the very spot where it landed until it was moved to a lovely green hillside overlooking the St. Joseph River to become my grandmother's headstone. It is there to this day. So I challenge all of you to do a little research tonight. Look up the Union City Meteor, Union City, Michigan, and see if you can learn more about it. I think I'll do the same because I never have. And we'll talk about it tomorrow. Have a great Saturday night. I have cooking in my oven something called pork carnitas. We are going to make tacos with them. I made a pineapple salsa. Some of the kids might make a burrito bowl with them. I also made some lime rice. So it should be a yummy night for dinner at the DeMarco house. I miss you all. I hope you're doing well. I'll see you tomorrow.